Hello and welcome to Matt D'Elia is Confused. This is Matt D'Elia and this is episode 10 and episode 10 is going to be a little different or a lot different than the first nine that you've heard. Um, Moving forward, this will be kind of, it is my idea that this will be the formula moving forward. That's hard to say. The formula moving forward will be that every 10th episode, I do a solo episode. That's the difference. I'll wait to let that sink in. No, but yeah, I, I, uh, I, I kind of wanted to give it space for me to not so much recap or tell you guys what's coming or anything like that, but give myself some space to kind of talk about shit just directly to you um, because I have mainly questions for guests and um, I think I'd like to kind of integrate what the guests have brought so far and uh, talk about what I'm excited about moving forward and just talk about some new shit that's either confusing me or upsetting me. Uh, And I got to say, today is the right day for me to be doing this first solo episode because I woke up with a migraine. And I felt like shit all day. And that made me mad. But now the migraine's gone and I'm still mad. So, it's interesting how that worked. But, you know what? Okay. Because it's fine. Because this is going to be a good episode. Uh, yeah, the first, the first nine episodes all had guests. One of the guests, the fir- our first guest, actually, former um, Repu- Tea Party Republican Congressman Joe Walsh, who some of you might already know this, but it's kind of news, um, Anybody who follows me certainly knows about it, but Joe has actually announced that he's going to run for president, but run obviously on the Republican side. So he's running against Donald Trump technically for the nomination. Obviously, he's going to lose. I think if you were to even ask Joe, I think he's actually said he knows he's going to lose. But I think it's fucking rad that he's doing that. Um, I love him. We disagree about, well, no, rather we agree about nothing, disagree about everything, but I love him. He came on the show. He's the first guest. He'll always have a soft, soft place in my heart for that reason. Um, uh, but obviously he's going to fucking lose. Uh, but I'm excited for him. Uh, and I'm happy. And I like to think that the doing Matt D'Elia is confused. Being a guest on Matt D'Elia is confused is sort of what pushed him, pushed him, uh, catapulted him into a new level of fame. Uh, and, 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 and audience awareness that now he has a real platform because he came on this show. That's definitely not true, but I'm thinking that I'm liking to think that. And, um, I think if it sounds better, if it makes me feel better to think a thing and it's going to be good for me to think that thing moving forward and it's not going to hurt anybody to think that thing as I move forward, then, then, then that's how, um, I think just from that point on. So now I, even though I know it's not true, I think Joe Walsh is running for president because he came onto my show and that put him into a new level, uh, into the spotlight much more than he was before he came on my show. And that's why he's running for president. So I thought that was cool that he's running for president because of me directly, 100% because of me, even though we don't agree at all. I think that's pretty cool. I love you, Joe. Um, also the, the I find I, I, I just checked uh, earlier today cause I knew I was doing this. I checked the listenership uh, on each episode, which by the way, I don't, I actually, st- I don't really understand podcasts still, uh, in that I don't, it, so many fucking people listen to these things. And so many of you have been listening to this and it's so fucking cool. I've always liked podcasts, but I still don't get the, the business model, <clears throat> uh, which is a problem moving forward. Cause now I'm in the business of podcasting, but 
I, 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 I've just been sort of amazed at how, I mean, I don't know how, how else to say this, how well the show has been doing and how well it's been received. We were like on the fucking top 10 chart on Apple podcasts and, and the society and culture, uh, category. And we were in the top 50 overall, uh, like right fucking right behind Oprah, uh, and ahead of Dr. Phil, which is where I always like to be just in general, both, uh, on the charts and with my physical body. But yeah, um, I guess that was like a shameless plug for myself while you're listening to me. I don't know why I did that, but, um, the reason I'm, I brought this up in the first place, cause the, the, the episode that you guys have listened to the most, it actually was the Joe episode for a really long time. Uh, I think that might've been obviously cause it was first for a while, but, but just, uh, I just noticed that the episode, the second episode with exorcist Bob Larson was actually, is actually the most listened to episode so far. And I think that makes sense. I've loved all my guests and I've, I'm, I'm proud of every episode and I'm, I'm proud of the guests that I'm going to have this month and moving forward, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. But, but I, I, I think I understand why Bob, Bob's episode, I call him Bob now because I feel like he's my friend, even though he probably wouldn't recognize me if he saw me on the street. Um, but yeah, Bob is my friend. Exorcist Bob is my friend. And <clears throat> I think it's the most popular one or most listened to one so far because it's kind of fun just talking about demons. I mean, the title of that episode is Sexually Transmitted Demons, which, you know, I don't know how you would not click on that, but some people didn't click on it, but a lot of you did. And, um, I think I get it because it's fun and it's fucking insane. Uh, and, and I'm going to try to get, I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get more exorcist guests, but as as I move forward, I'm going to try to keep the mix up of, you know, serious people, professional people, and uh, things that are more on the fringe and, and out there. Um, uh, coming up, actually, <clears throat> I'm doing an episode with this guy, Martin Geddes. He's, uh, he's got a pretty big Twitter following. He's, he's like a believer in uh, QAnon. And I really want to talk to him about that because on our third episode, we had an expert on QAnon. Not a believer, an expert. His name's Travis View. I'm a big fan of his. And I was lucky enough to have him come on the show. We talked about QAnon, the conspiracy theory. If you don't know what that is, listen to episode three. But uh, if you, uh, assuming you do know what it is because you don't live under a fucking rock, um, uh, I'm excited. Moving forward, what I I really want to do is if I have someone come on the show and sort of, not that Travis is like opposed to QAnon. He's just a, he's just an expert on the subject and knows everything there is to know about it. Uh, but he's coming at it from a viewpoint of obviously he doesn't believe it. I don't believe in that either, obviously. But um, I want to have I want to have people on who do believe in this shit, you know. Um, uh, so so not necessarily to like debate me, but but just like I spoke with Bob, I want to know what's up. I want to know how the fuck you believe in crazy shit. And that's a big part of what this show is um, because I look out at the world and I see people believing crazy shit and I don't know what the fuck they're thinking, but I want to know and I don't want to make fun of anybody and I don't want to try to, you know, own anybody or or like win an argument. Uh, I just want to know, you know, obviously I'll end up disagreeing with a lot, a lot of people a lot of the time, but that doesn't mean I'm trying to fucking end up victorious, you know? I'm not trying to get a soundbite. I really want to know. I 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 want to know. Whether I agree with you coming in, or disagree with you coming in, I just want to know. Uh, I also had guest uh, John Stoltenberg. I don't. I'm losing track of the numbers of them. But the reason I bring John up is because we talk about incel culture on that, and I've started interviewing incels for an incel episode. And the incel episode, 
has been hard to put together because incels are very easy to find but hard to pin down. Go figure. But that's the case. Um, the one the one I've talked to so far, the idea is I'm going to talk to three incels and it's going to be like one episode with three different segments, uh, each of uh, varying degrees or levels of engagement with incel culture. The one incel I spoke with who... Uh, fucking blew my mind. He uh, uh, self-proclaimed a black cell. He's, a, he's, he's black. And he is an incel. And I didn't know this, but there's a term called black cell. Uh, and he, he was actually amazing to talk to. We had a really respectful dialogue. And uh, I think I learned a lot. And I don't want to sell that shit up the river because I want you guys to listen to that episode and hear it for yourselves. But I'm really excited about the incel episode. Incel culture is fucking wild to me. Um, and that's coming and yeah, moving forward. What else do we have? Um, I got some really cool guests for this month. Uh, too many to name that I can remember at least, but Rachel Dolezal is coming on the show. Um, I think we're, I think we got Dennis Rodman coming on the show, which is the coolest thing I've ever heard. So I hope that happens. I would call it tentative now, uh, but he's going to come on the show. If I got to find out where he lives and bang on his fucking door, he's going to come on the show. I love Dennis Rodman. He's coming on. And yeah, guests like that, uh, some writers who've written books that I'm really, really, really interested in, uh, stuff like that. Um, one thing I've noticed actually, just based on the feedback from all you guys, which has been insanely overwhelmingly positive. And I, I, I try to write back to you, all of you and say, thank you, but I mean it like uh, really, it means a lot. Cause I kind of, when I started this, my background is in writing for, uh, movies and I didn't really know what I was doing. And, and the instant uh, positive feedback and constructive feedback was, was really helpful uh, for me. If there's been a negative thing, <clears throat> fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. But for real, if there's been a negative thing, the one thing it has been is uh, this sort of like, this actually pisses me off. So this is good. Uh, th this thing that people say where they say you know i would like it if, if, if you if it wasn't so political I, i'm i'm not into politics i'm not political uh, all right i don't get it i don't know what that means you're in the world and if you're interested in shit at, like in the world politics isn't something you can really totally avoid this isn't a political show at all, obviously, but yeah, every once in a while I'm going to have a political guest having Joe Walsh on the show fucking ruled. Um, I think that's just people who, who, who like Donald Trump and they don't want to hear shit talking about Donald Trump. Fuck that. I'm not political. Okay. Then go only watch cartoons. And don't listen to podcasts, you know? Um, but. K. Now I feel better because I said K. I don't know. I think, I think, <clears throat> I think, I mean, I have to imagine by now, most of you know what's up with me and K. Uh, not the letter K. It's K-A-Y. So actually, you know what? Wait, before I even get into what I was going to say. Some of you are all about K and you love it and you write it to me and you send me shit and I love it, but you aren't fucking spelling it right. The whole thing about K is that it's not just the letter K. It's K A Y. The whole point of it is that it's like fun and silly and joyous and it sort of like dissolves tension. K, just the letter, is why. I invented, I'm an inventor and I invented K, K-A-Y. Actually, I didn't totally invent it. I'm going to come clean. I co-invented it uh, 
with a friend of mine. Uh, we were in our laboratory and we co-created the word K in response to when the back, back, back story is that I got sick of fucking getting texted the letter K or, or emailed the letter K. It sounds so fucking dismissive and, and passive aggressive. Maybe it's just easy to read into negatively. So the genius idea of K is that it's like you spell it out with a K and a and a Y and it's like, it's clear you're not mad because if you were mad, you wouldn't write K a Y because it's too silly. Uh, just to look at it is silly. And then that turned into saying K out loud. Um, and saying it, yeah, I'll use that word. I was going to try to use a different word, but I'll say, I'll say the word cool. It's cool to say K when somebody or something upsets you. It's cool to say K when you see something dumb and it bothers you. It's cool when your fucking parents or kids are nagging the shit out of you and they're asking you to do something and being annoying as shit. And you just say, K. it's a release valve for all the tension that you're feeling in life. This is something I want to clear up though. I introduced the term on my brother's podcast. I introduced the term to the world on congratulations, episode 100. So if you're interested in the terms introduct introduction to the world, that's where it is. If you haven't heard that yet, but I want to clear one thing up about it. And I think this is a common misconception, just like the way it's spelled, which is not the letter K stop sending me that shit. K a Y. K, not K. K is rude. K is not rude. But the misconception is that it's, it's, it, there's some kind of like negative connotation to it. Like if somebody says something to me and I, and it's like, uh, do you want to get tacos? Matt, do you want to get tacos? Okay. That doesn't mean I don't want to get tacos, but I'll go anyway. I guess it could mean that, but that's not what I mean. It's not necessarily what I mean. That's what I'm trying to say. It's kind of just like, okay, that sounds fucking cool. We're going to go get tacos. It's not necessarily negative. It's just like, it's a happy thing to say. You can do it when you're upset. You can do it when you're happy. You can do it when you're sad, angry. It doesn't matter. It's the great equalizer. Okay. This is why I say it in the beginning of every episode. If you didn't know right before the intro music that my musician friend geniusly made for the show, uh, Brian scary. He's a rad musician. He doesn't fucking listen to the podcast though. So fuck you, Brian. Um, no, nah, I love you, Brian. <sighs> what else? Oh, this is actually, okay. So this is why this is like, uh, we actually have a few backed up episodes, a couple, um, that we've recorded, but haven't aired. But I, I not only wanted to get in this thing where it's like every 10th episode, I do a solo episode, but I also, um, there, there's also <clears throat> a reason why I wanted to do it today. Uh, and get, get this done because there's something that's been on my mind and it's, uh, I mean, it's somewhere in between confusing and upsetting. So I think it's the right thing to be talking about. And I don't know what guest I would have to talk to about this. Cause I'm in the movie industry and I don't really want to have movie industry people on here because that would be boring to me. Cause it's all I do, you know, um, for a living besides this. Um, but I feel like some guests, I think I talked about this a little bit with Sarah Shulman and Vanessa place, uh, just kind of about, <clears throat> well, let me, let me tell it through a story. I was driving the other day and if you're driving through LA, you can't not see what in whatever direction you look, you can't not see 75,000 billboards for movies and TV shows. You can't not see 75,000 of them. 
And I was driving, I think I was on Beverly. And I was in traffic because never not traffic. And in a row, in a row, I saw, what the fuck was it? It was, it was, the, it was the order of it that was particularly egregious too. It was like the billboards that I saw, it was like, a, it was like, I think the first, the first one was the, the Fast and Furious, the Hobbs and Shaw thing. The 70, 75,000th installment of Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw. Which is like, whatever. I mean, I would, I would see that shit for sure, you know, so I'm not like shitting on Hobbs and Shaw. Um, but this was all in a row. And so I kind of led to this epiphany perhaps. And then it was, I think the fucking lion King, the, the live action lion King. And it was a kid's movie. I think it was the angry birds sequel. And then the last one I saw all that's normal. Like that's pretty much in the range of everyday experience seeing three billboards in a row for not original ideas. Um, but the last one I saw was Rambo. Why is there another Rambo movie? It was just depressing seeing all of those in a row. It was like the 75,000th installment of fast and furious a live action remake of a thing that's maybe the most famous fucking movie ever already in the Lion King. Angry Birds 2, which I didn't even know there was Angry Birds 1, but that's depressing. Double depressing. Because it was like a phone game. There's a whole franchise off of a phone game. And then Rambo. And on the, on the fucking billboard was like 78-year-old Sylvester Stallone. Which I've never even seen a Rambo movie, but it's a li- it's 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 um. Hold on, I'm looking up how, how old Stallone is. Oh, cool, he's fucking older than my dad. Stallone is seventy three, and he's playing Rambo still. Why do we like that? It's like I saw that movie, The Mule, with Clint Eastwood, and whatever. I've liked Clint Eastwood. I haven't liked Clint Eastwood in a while. But he's, he, he looks dead. He looks like a dead man. Animated. It's like a Tim Burton thing, like an animated dead man. He's all shrunken and shit. He's like, he's like fucking punching people in that movie. Why are we believing this? Why is this what we want to see? I mean, at least the mule was an original thing, though. My point about all this... <clears throat> Is it, it's, it's not that remakes specifically bother me. I'm down with remakes. I'm down with sequels. I'm down with sequels a long time after the first one came out. But Rambo, it's just... No. We keep going back to the well with these ideas from when people my age were kids. You know, Rambo was the shit. The new Terminator movie, like, it's probably going to be cool, but fuck. I don't want another Terminator movie, man. I want a fucking, the new Terminator thing. It's like nobody's letting us be adults. They're just showing us shit that they showed us when we were kids. And now kids are seeing kids shit for now. And that means, like, when we're fucking 70, when I'm 70, like, uh, you know, Zac Efron's going to be in the Angry Birds live action movie. This recycling of the shit, that's fine, but it can't all be recycling. I like sequels and remakes and reboots as much as the next guy. Maybe not as much as the next guy. In fact, I usually fucking hate them. But in principle, I have no problem with them. But it's just all this shit. All this shit. I'm going to pull up a random theater on my phone right now and I'm going to read what's playing. I'm going to look, I'm going to look in the town where my parents live. Okay. Angel has fallen, which, wow, I forgot about that. That's like another one. That's the third, the third one 
of those Gerard Butler movies where he's like a sexy bodyguard who saves a sexy president from dying. It's like die hard, but political. I'm not into politics. I don't like politics. I only like die hard because <laughs> Olympus and has fallen and angel has fallen. Are, they're too political. Uh, good boys, which is a rated R comedy about little boys. I mean, okay. Speaking of not letting us grow up ready or not, that's a horror movie. Horror movies can kind of get away with whatever the fuck. Cause they're going to make money no matter what. You could just have an idea like about a, a killer cabinet, you know? And you could make it for like $2 million and it would make like $80 million. And your friends would be like, you see that movie about the killer cabinet? It's fucking sick. So that counts as original, but it's like a half count. Then it's the Lion King, which we already went over that. Fast and Furious presents Shobbs and Haw. We went over that too. Angry Birds 2 went over that as well. Dora and the Lost City of Gold. Don't even know what the fuck that is, but I'm guessing it's Dora the Explorer. Explorer? Which, I don't know, one of those. But that's definitely four kids also. Which, fine, I get it. Parents have to, like, have something to do with their kids where they're quiet, you know? So I get why there's kids' movies. But even that's like a remake of a thing that already happened when we were kids. No, maybe not when we were kids. I don't know. What the fuck is Dora the Explorer? Anyway, the only fully acceptable thing that's out in this theater is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And that's Quentin Tarantino. So he kind of doesn't even count because he's Quentin Tarantino. He could also have a movie about a killer cabinet and it would make $800 million worldwide. I don't know. God, that's... I mean, I know I'm in this industry, so it's like... I guess I, I guess I gotta, it could be, it could be stated that I have a chip on my shoulder about it, but just like give us other shit too. You know, we want other shit too. Um, fucking Rambo. I mean, John Rambo is 73 now and he's got like a crossbow running through the woods. No, no. Absolutely not. Everything's for kids, even if it's not for kids. I want things to be for adults with no kid shit, you know? Everybody loves Stranger Things, and it's like, okay, fine. But that's kid shit. Whatever happened to, like, the movies, like, in the fucking 90s when I was a kid, and, like, there was shit that, like, you knew you weren't supposed to see, like, fucking seven and Basic Instinct, those movies were for adults. Now as adults, we don't get things for adults. We get, we get things that are for kid versions of us right now. Fucking 78-year-old Rambo. I mean, I like Stallone, but... Rambo... You know, it all, it all just feels really safe. Like that, 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 that's kind of what's underneath all of that shit. It's really safe because, because it's, it's a proven and it has a track record. And I, and I, it's a, it's a little extra bothersome right now to me, because when I think about the greatest movements in cinema, not to be a cock, but you know, in movies, the best eras of movies are oftentimes during social upheaval or political unrest around the world or in certain pockets of the world. I mean, you guys might, be, might not be as big of film nerds as I am, but after World War II, the movies coming out of Japan were like fucking insanely great and some of the best movies ever made. In America, during and after Vietnam, same shit. And that there's countless examples of that but now here obviously 
political unrest and social upheaval obviously are happening now. But we get angry birds too. Fuck. I don't want, I don't, I, I, I don't even want something that reflects the upheaval. I just want something fucking original and for adults. I mean, even when I was a kid, I wanted shit that was for adults. I didn't, I didn't want to see whatever thing that was out for kids. I wanted to see, um, seven. I remember I wanted to see seven. So, so this is funny. Actually, I wanted to see seven so bad. I think I was like 11 when it came out. I think that's 95. I wanted to see seven so, 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 so bad. And my parents wouldn't let me because good parents, because I was 10 and seven is not for 10 year olds. They had seen it. They had already seen seven and were like, there's no fucking way you're allowed to see seven. And this was before, like the only way to see it was in the theaters. There, there there's no other, like I couldn't go online and find some pirated version. That wasn't even a thing yet. So I was like, we're trying to work my shit as a kid, like jockeying for like sympathy or trying to act like an adult or I don't know. I was like trying to shame them into letting me see seven, which obviously wasn't going to work. But as I was 10, so I thought it might. And I was pissed about it. And I was so pissed about it. And I, and the, that there was the, the, the night I was the most pissed about it. I had to, I had to, watch my little cousins who were like four and seven at the time. And for some reason I was like pouting. I was such a little bitch kid. You know, I was like a little bitchy kid, I guess. Fuck. That's depressing. But I was okay. And, um, I, I, I like laid down in between their, they had twin beds and I laid down between their twin beds. And when my uncle came home, he, he, he like called my parents frantic. It was like, a, 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 uh, uh, his, his kids were there, but I, I seemed like I was fucking missing, but I was just being a bitch pouting in between their twin beds. And so my parents and my aunt and uncle, they thought I was fucking missing because I was being such a bitch about wanting to see seven. Um, which in retrospect makes no sense, but it did at the time that was like, I was putting my foot down by laying down between the twin beds. Anyway, I wanted to see what was for adults, you know? I couldn't wait to be an adult. I didn't know that being an adult sucked. It seemed rad. But I wanted to be one. I don't even know if this is true. Do kids now want to be adults quickly? I feel like everybody wants to be kids now, even kids. I mean, looking at what's playing in the theater, you, you it's like infantilization defined basically whether you're an adult you see shit that makes you think of when you were a kid as an adult or you're actually a kid and you go see shit that's for kids or you see a movie about a killer cabinet and you're an adult and you better like it because it's the only thing for you killer cabinet (sighs) Anyway, yeah, the, the one thing that we were historically that we get out of shitty periods in history are great movies. We don't even get that. Fuck. Oh, that was the other, uh, the other complaint I heard is that I, I curse too much. I, I mean, yeah. No, fuck that. I curse too much? What what are you, a pastor? No. Don't listen. Fuck, sorry. I got distracted. My dogs are fucking looking at me. Charlie, stop looking at me. Billy, you too. Stop looking at me. But yeah, I I generally feel, I I just feel like instead of going the way of like having some communal sense of like, let's, let's make cool shit 
in the face of all this oppression or, or, or confusion or whatever it is, instead of that, we've gone the way of like anything to distract us from what's going on because it's so fucking depressing and upsetting and confusing that we'll take fucking Rambo 13 when he's aged 78 and his fucking skin is coming off his bones. I, I, I would rather, I don't know. I mean, distraction. I, I, I don't, I don't get the appeal of the movie of, of pure distraction. I don't know. I don't want to turn my brain off when I'm paying to see something. I don't know. I mean, I guess most people want that. I don't want that. I don't have a hard time turning my brain off in regular life. Like when boring people are talking, my brain's off and I'm like doing my own thing and thinking about cool shit. I get wanting to be distracted from like the fucking news or whatever shit the media is fucking going on about whatever the fuck tragedy happened in like some small town in fucking Oklahoma that doesn't apply to anyone at all, but is for some reason on the front page of CNN, some guy fucking cut the head off of his wife and dumped it in some oil tanker or some shit. I don't know why I made that news story up. That's pretty dark actually. But yeah, I feel like the news is always like acting like things are news that aren't news. Like when some guy kills his wife. What the fuck? That's not news. It's news to the to the to to the people who's who are related to the woman who had her head cut off. But you know, it's not news. Not news to me. Anyway, I I, I just feel like everything now is built to distract us. Not like in some conspiratorial like they're trying to confuse us they're trying to get off soft track i'm not like that i i I fucking i just i don't know i i don't have that reaction of like oh i'm exhausted by all this shit i just want to turn off my brain and look at fucking rambo at 78 i i relate to that none if you're a parent and you just want to have your kid be not Annoying for a little while? Fine. Go see Angry Birds 7. But what about adults? I'm an adult. I've waited my whole life to become an adult. And now it sucks to be an adult. Fucking raw deal. Oh... I would see a fucking I would see that movie Killer Cabinet though. For sure, I would be I would see that opening weekend. Damn. Dogs are being annoying staring at me. Um Speaking of conspiratorial shit, I, I feel like, I mean, this has been a, uh, a prominent subject on the podcast, uh, talking about conspiracies, QAnon. I think there's, I think so many people are prone to believing in conspiracies, whether they're vast, uh, ridiculous seeming ones like QAnon. But like, you know, I grew up with the JFK shit swirling all around, and 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 I just feel like it's. It seems so prevalent now, conspiracy thinking, you know, Russia and Trump and and Clinton body count shit, Jeffrey Epstein, all that shit. And this is something that's been bothering me too, that I wanted to talk about on here. And it's that I think I've even mentioned, I think I even mentioned this briefly in my episode with uh, Travis. But I think what people are failing to realize when they're spinning these conspiracy theories in their minds is that everyone's bad at their job. Everyone's bad at doing things. Everyone's more or less inept. And to have a conspiracy that requires, by definition, 
more than one person in on it with you, with the co-conspirators rather, to enact the uh, conspiracy. But whoever those people are that, that you're assuming are in, in on it, in on a conspiracy, they're m- much, much more likely to be inept at, and bad at their job or bad at anything that they might be liable to do than they are to be good at it. For instance, the Clinton body count thing is a perfect example. I don't like the Clintons. I thought Hillary Clinton was the worst candidate candidate in my lifetime next to only the person that she ran against, apparently. Um, but So I'm not like defending them at all. But the Clinton body count thing, you guys have all seen too many movies if you think the Clintons are sending people out into the world to kill people. That's not, that's not possible because people are inept. Generally speaking, I'm sure there are some people that are not inept, but I've never met any. Um, people are clumsy and they fuck up and they, and they forget shit to have a conspiracy. Look, Watergate full on conspiracy, that shit unraveled and everyone involved was clearly an inept idiot, including Richard Nixon. Everyone involved in that was an idiot and they got caught proving my point. Yes. These things happen, but when they do, they don't fucking work out really. I mean, this is not even a left versus right thing. Like uh, people who think like Trump is like, has like some like fucking cell phone some like burner in his pocket directly connected to Putin. And they just like colluding about shit. Come on. Everyone's just fucking up all day, every day. And it's hard enough, you know, everything's hard enough. You don't need to add some like insane fucking conspiracy theory shit on top of that. Yeah, no, it's, it's not left and right. People on the left, for sure. So many people I know on the left. Just convinced Trump had some deal with Putin, you know? Okay. That guy pulled off some masterful fucking conspiracy? That guy? The fucking guy on The Apprentice? The fucking guy in Gremlins 2? The fucking guy that tweet, tweets that shit? That is so funny, even though I hate him? Let me look up. There was this one tweet he had. That was legitimately like, I gotta give it up. Fuck, what was it? It was the one about, uh, I mean, I, I just pulled up my phone to check, but there's no way because he tweets once every seven seconds and I have to go back so far. Hang on. I'm pulling it up right now. It was when he was talking about, he was defending himself for not for he he was claiming he didn't say There was some news report that he, he, he suggested sending a nuclear bomb to Hurricane Dorian to try to stop it before it hit, hit, uh, hit land. And, and he, which, you know, I don't, I don't put it past him to say that. 
He would, for, I, I could see him for sure saying that. Um, but he, his tweet was defending it. Okay, hold on. I'm going to Google Trump nuclear hurricane tweet. I mean, you know. Wow. Trump nuclear hurricane tweet, and it gave me exactly what I was looking for. If somebody told me that that was going to fucking be something I, I Googled while, like, while like uh, Obama was president, Trump nuclear hurricane tweet. Ah, what's up with the world? Okay, here we go. Yes, this is the one. Axios, in parentheses, whatever that is, end parentheses, sat back and said, G, but this is the best part. G is spelt out with all in caps with five E's. So it's Axios, parentheses, whatever that is, sat back and said, G, let's see, what can we make up today to embarrass the president? Then they said, why don't we say he wants to bomb a hurricane? That should do it. The media in our country is totally out of control. I mean, that, there, there's nothing really like particularly uh, noteworthy about that tweet, but the fact that he did the capital G E E E E E. I don't know. I, I actually can't define what it was about that, but that fucking made me laugh so hard. That fucking guy just like laying somewhere in the White House tweeting that, you know? Gee. Such a wise ass. Such a baby. But yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna, gonna admit that this made me fucking laugh. And that's okay. It's okay when terrible shit makes you laugh. Because we're all gonna die anyway. And it's okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, um, I've had some friends in the last few weeks say something similar to me, which I don't know if it's random or something's in the air. Uh, maybe just everyone's life sucks. And so like they're, they're, they got this one thing on their mind, but I've had several people in my life, all different ages too, like from like 28 to like in their fifties, talk to me about how they're, they have such anxiety and such fear of death. Sounds depressing. Disclaimer, this is not going to be depressing. Uh, this is actually, I mean, cause when I was a kid, I used to be afraid of dying. Like just, I was never not afraid of dying. That's all I fucking thought about as a kid, dying. I'd like wake my mom up. I'd wake my mom up at like 3 a.m. And just be like, mom, what happens when we die? And she obviously, she was sleeping and so annoyed. But at first she'd be patient and be like, we go to heaven, honey, go, go to bed. And I'd be like, no, I know. That's why I'm asking because I, I know how in church I was raised Catholic, which is fucking i'll save that for another episode but i was raised catholic so i knew that i knew that the the working theory was that we go to heaven but even at that age i was like i don't know six i don't know how i think i might have been younger than that i just knew it was bullshit you know and i was like yeah but how do you know how do you know heaven is there how do you know that happens Cause like I would look around, there's no fucking evidence of it, you know? And most kids were like, yeah, heaven. But like, I was like, oh, something's fishy about this shit. This is not, this is not legit, you know? And my mom would start to get annoyed and she'd be like, I just know, I just know, you know, go to bed. And I'd be like, well, you know, cause I was, the more I think about it, she'd be like, Matthew, go to bed. And so I would. And so the reason I would do that is cause it was underneath that. I was afraid to die. But I think it's good to keep in mind, to, to, to remind ourselves. First of all, there's enough, there's enough 
actual while we're alive shit to be anxious and, and depressed about. So like that alone means we should just kind of put that, the feelings about death aside for our own sake. But I know it's kind of unavoidable for some people. I can't help but think about it. But when you die, the thing about dying is that then you're dead. And nothing, nothing at all, nothing happens after that. You don't feel, you don't feel good ever again, but you definitely don't feel bad ever again because you're dead. And when you're dead, nothing. This is why my least favorite expression, I, I don't like expressions because I think they ring so fucking hollow and they're just like what people say when they don't know what else to fucking say. But the one that's always driven me nuts is sleep when you're, you can sleep when you're dead. No, you cannot sleep when you're dead. You can only be dead when you're dead. So if you like sleeping, you should do it while you're alive. I think sleeping is absolutely terrific. A terrific thing to do. It makes me feel great. I don't sleep that much, but when I do, I love it. And no, I, no, thank you very much. I can't do it when I'm dead. Because I'll only be dead. That is a bummer. When I'm dead, I can't sleep anymore. That's a little bit of a bummer. But the truth is, it won't be a bummer that I can't sleep anymore after I'm dead. Because then I'll only be dead. I won't have thoughts. I won't have feelings. I won't have anything because dead. That makes me feel good. It's like a load off my shoulders. It's almost as effective as... Okay. It's when you feel this way, it's like saying get to life in general or to, to, to death. Rather, it's like spitting in the face of death. Oh, I'm going to die. I'm going to die one day. Maybe soon, maybe not soon at all. Maybe really, really too long and it'll suck even more. Okay. Okay. It's okay. We're all going to die, and it's K. Um, that's it. That's all I got right now. Um, I will be doing... Let me know what you think about this whole formula of every 10th episode doing a solo episode. Um, I'm into it. Um, but like everything else I'm doing, it's new. So maybe I am being a fucking idiot about that. And if I am, I'm sure somebody out there will tell me, but, uh, yeah, for now, this is the, um, this is the idea. So next week we will be back to guests, back to our normal programming. And then in 10 episodes, we will have another solo episode. And yeah, um, if you, if you, we've already actually had a couple, uh, guests that have been suggested by the audience. Um, and please to all of you who are listening, if you have ideas, things that confuse you or things that you know, confuse me or might be upsetting just broadly into the world or funny or whatever the fuck, if you think they should be on my show, please tell me. I'm uh, at Matt D'Elia on Twitter, at M-A-T-T-D-E-L-I-A. And same on Instagram. And that's it, I think. That's, that's Those are the only places I am. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for listening to me talk about movies and dying and killer cabinets and all that. I appreciate you so much, and I will see you again next week. Thank you so much. Kate!